Hey, so uh, if you are crazy you want to start with, it's John 11.35, Jesus wept. So prior to the that being written in here, why does he weep is really, honestly, I find this to be one of the most compelling, even though it's one of the, it is the shortest verse in the in the King James Bible oh, and in most Bibles, um, I find it compelling. I find it amazing. I find this to be remarkable when you back up and read why Jesus wept. Therefore, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would have not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? And then, verse 35, Jesus wept. He, so this right here, we see that Jesus Christ is a man of, of compassion he he has not just it's this he is he weeps because of his compassion i think there's a couple reasons but one first and foremost it starts with his compassion for mary's love for her brother and then the other people that were there that were also deeply moved or crying or weeping or whatever jesus shows such love for them and compassion for them it, it says he was troubled and then he wept i also believe he's weeping because of his friend lazarus while i think he already knew he i don't i know he knew that lazarus had died um he, this what i think when he you know when you get in that environment when you go to a funeral you might when you go to the funeral, all of a sudden the emotions in which you're feeling, you ever notice that? Like sometimes you, you, you hear a friend who has died and you don't cry yet or you don't, but then you get into the service and there's other people around you who are crying and you cannot hold back your tears. And when you, when you honor that person in the funeral setting, there's just something that happens where you, there's an emotional release and you're able to kind of mourn or start the mourning process sometimes. Well, I think that's kind of what we see is that compassion we have inside the, the, the church building when we're at a funeral, whatever it may be, uh, when we see other people around us who are crying for the loss of a loved one. So, I mean, I've been to funerals where I didn't even know the person well, but I felt such compassion for those people's, um, you know, hurt. And when they start crying when through the funeral and you see their kids crying or their loved ones crying, you know, you can't help but weep with them. And this is the Jesus. We, I think we're seeing the human side of Jesus Christ, that he is a man of compassion, that Jesus Christ of Lazarus is a man of compassion. And he has compassion for those that are mourning Lazarus dying. I also believe that we know and learn that Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. And so he is, I think, also crying for his friend as his friend has died. And, you know, I believe this is the same compassion that Jesus Christ feels for us when we are dead in our transgressions. I know I'm, I'm making a connection here, and, and this isn't talking in any way about sin specifically, but I believe over and over again the Bible references that we are dead in our transgressions. And I have been in that spot. I mean, I'm not sure if you how uh, I, in your life, have you ever been spirit led? Have you ever walked in the spirit and you're hearing the Holy Spirit and you feel like you're almost walking on cloud nine and yet somehow we fall back into the habit of sin or or whatever it may be and we and there is a distinct moment in time where I can look back after and see the disconnect between me and God. That Death that happens from our sin, from our transgressions, is spoken in the Bible so many times because it is 
the truth about the consequences of our actions. The unintended consequence. We know if I go rob a bank, I know the consequence may be I get shot on my way out the door uh, or, or um, the police are going to be sitting there waiting for me or whatever. We know there's consequences that are going to happen resulting directly from robbing that bank. One of the things that I don't think we always um, or I, for myself, listen, I don't weigh the costs of my sin. I weigh, I don't even, I weigh the consequences and maybe it prevents me from robbing the bank when I consider the consequences, even though maybe I need the money or I need this or that. I think I do. You know, when I consider robbing a bank, right, you, you come to the conclusion, this is, this is ridiculous. Obviously I cannot rob the bank. The consequences are grave. They're stupid. I know I'm going to get caught, shot or something else is going to happen. But the unintended consequences, consequence that I think needs to weigh on our heart is the sin in which separates us from God. So if we are living in a righteous way and our hearts are communing with God, understand this, that our sin, my sin, will in fact uh, cause death in a separation between me and God. And here we find this that our death from sin, I believe, will make Jesus weep just like he does for Lazarus, just like he has compassion as a man, as a man of, you know, just like you and I, we see his compassion that is no different than any of us when we know of a loved one's loved one who has passed away, that we have that compassion. So we see right here the compassion of Jesus Christ as a man. I also think he, you know, like I'm saying, I believe wholeheartedly this is the same compassion he has for us when we are dead in our transgressions. He weeps and mourns for us when we are dead in our transgressions. He wants a right relationship with us. He wants to commune with you. He wants you to come to him each and every day and, and get on our knees and have a relationship. He wants us to know who he is. He wants us to love him. Do you know Jesus Christ loves you? Let me ask you this. Do you know that Jesus Christ loves you? And if you, the answer is, yeah, I believe that Jesus loves me, right? Remember the song, Jesus loves me, the Bible says it so, right? Here's the question. Another, the second question I have is, do you love Jesus Christ? Are you concerned if I, if I, um, if I cheated on my wife, one of the consequences is that is my wife finding out and leaving me, right? She's going to divorce me. That sin will cause separation directly between me and my wife. And that would break my heart, right? That same consequence is, is, is there and um, when we sin against Jesus Christ. The consequence of Jesus Christ having to back away and separate himself from us because of our sin is the real consequences for sin in our lives. So I can't encourage us enough to understand the consequences of sin, to weigh the consequences of sin. I wanted to follow this all up, and I, I really wanted to make this video uh, much shorter than this. Is what does Jesus do when he gets to the tomb? He tells Lazarus to come out of the tomb. Now we see, we've seen the compassion of Jesus Christ for his friend, for the friends and the loved ones of Lazarus. Four days after we know that he dies, it says right here, Lazarus was dead for four days. What does Jesus do? He walks up to the tomb and he has the authority to tell a dead man to rise and come up out of the tomb. And he does. And when he comes out, he says to the people, take off his grave clothes. Take off the very wrappings that would have been wrapped around him when they put him in the tomb. That, we now we see the authority that he has. That we see him as God right here. Only God's going to raise this man from the dead. Only God can be raised from the dead. Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. But he raises Lazarus out of the dead with nothing more than the spoken words come up out of the tomb. Come out, Lazarus. Come out. Listen, 
We know he's compassionate as a man, but now we see he has the authority to raise us up out of that death. He has the very, he has everything, the authority over death in your life. The sin that is causing you to be separated from your loved ones, your family, your job, this, the things that bring you, that the skeletons that hang in your closet that are, that got you full of shame and guilt. He has the authority to overcome that. The separation which you which is a part of your life because of the sin in your life, the death in your life from sin, he has the authority over. And the compassion to bring you up out of the grave. He has the compassion and love for you to, to raise you from the grave, whatever it looks like. There are some pretty grave situations out there where put us in the grave. And it doesn't matter what it is. He has the authority to defeat it. And then he's going to tell you to take off those grave clothes. Take off those old clothes, my friends. Take them off. Put on some new fresh clothes. Go get yourself some new fresh clothes. The clothes that have, when you've been clothed in the majesty and the righteousness of Christ. Those clothes are like a brand new, beautiful suit. That looks so good, so clean, so crisp. That when you walk into a place, you know, like ZZ Top said, every girl's crazy about a sharp dressed man. You can, he's saying, take off those old grave clothes, those old stinking, rotting grave clothes that you were dead in. That man has been, has been, that man has been crucified through his crucifixion. Now, he has the authority to raise us up out of the tomb. From whatever's going on in your life, I assure you, Jesus Christ is the answer. He is not only the answer, but he is, he is, he is begging you to come to him. All he's saying is, come to me. And I will, and I will raise you up out of your transgressions, out of the 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 muck and the mire whatever's going on in your life he says i got you and then i'm going to give you a brand new tailor made suit that is absolutely a brand new beautiful summer dress for the ladies out there who want to look good feel good put some makeup on he's saying i got that for you get all you got you can't put that stuff on you cannot put makeup on if you have the very clothes that you are wrapped in the the grave wrappings on your face of the old woman or the old man you cannot put makeup on you can't put new clothes on over the old ones first and foremost you have to accept the authority the, I think first accept the compassion of who Jesus Christ is and his compassion for you. Once you've accepted that he is who he says he is and his compassion for you and his love for you and that he weeps for you just like he did for Lazarus, then you say, then when he calls you up out of the grave, you come out of that grave. Jesus, Lazarus didn't stay laying in that dead tomb, did he? He didn't stay laying in the dead, rotting filth of that tomb. No, no. He came up out of the tomb as he was called. Jesus Christ is calling you up out of your tomb today. I know it right now. I know Jesus Christ is saying to me, these people that are listening to this, somebody's watching this, you are watching this, and Jesus Christ, you know, is putting on your heart. To, he's calling you up out of your tomb. He is calling you up out of the hurt that you feel. He is calling you up out of the shame, the guilt that you will feel, the oppression from the sin in which you are living in. He's calling you up. He is saying, Dana, come up out of the grave now take off those old grave clothes and here i'm going to give you a new beautiful handsome suit and that's who you're going to be you're going to be the new man that's looking good that's been that's been dressed in the righteousness of christ not the grave not the grave clothes come up out of the grave get them grave clothes off put your makeup on get your fresh start on jesus christ is saying i love you come on up i got compassion for you hey if you like what i had to say today please hit like hit subscribe my friends leave me a comment we're going to be trying to be doing this 
this prayer day that addiction kills. So if you are battling with addiction, please reach out to me. Let me pray for you. I will pray for you. Hopefully I can help you maybe facilitate some uh, a program in your area. I'm willing to do some legwork for you. If you need help and Jesus Christ is, is putting on your heart right now that he has compassion for you and he wants to drag you up out of the grave of addiction, listen, reach out. I'll see what I can do, but I know what I can do is I can pray for you. We're going to be doing a live uh, uh, YouTube video, uh, uh, whatever you call it, YouTube live coming up where we're going to be praying for anybody who comes on here and hits subscribe or leaves a comment about what they need prayer for. We're going to be praying for them. So please get up. So let me know how we can pray for you. Jesus Christ is calling you up out of the grave today. There is power in the words of Jesus Christ. He has all authority over whatever you're going to. I promise you, he is just, he has so much compassion and love for you. He is just waiting. He is waiting to answer this prayer for you. All right, y'all have a blessed day. Hey, my friends, keep the faith.